so uh, just before we start, were there a lot of changes in S7? Um, I saw no. it was a strike all, right? Yes. So I can tell you off the top of my head. So it went to two committees in the House. It went to first to health care, and the major changes there were date changes in terms of when the reports were due. Okay. And then there was language in sections one and two, which are both reporting sections, that say stakeholders have to be consulted in when coming up with the report. So those were the two changes from healthcare. And then the change from human services, there are two changes. Um, in section four, which was the section on um, the report back on Dulce model and on the home visiting, that section was struck. And then in section one, which was the report that's required by CMS about um, ACOs and um, that the um, human services added language um, that said um, to take into consideration future plans about integration of long-term services. Okay, we'll look at those two. Should be up I'm just, I, I'm just trying the internet. Is not the internet. No, I can't. No. Aha, here we are. We have. We, oh, we have S7 is passed by the Senate. We're going to put okay. that. Mm -hmm. We have S146, proposal of amendment. Let's look at that first. Okay. Can mm -hmm. I have a hard copy? I'm sorry, I can't get mine. It's not working. Yeah, maybe we should each get a hard copy. until Because this is so slow. Yeah, it's too <laughs> I heard we were considering a cloud oh, tax, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, huh? Maybe what? I said it's her. It heard we were considering a cloud tax, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it popped up. <laughs> we got it. Okay, okay, let's, okay, let's right. look at it. Okay. So what this amendment does is it strikes out the whole subsection on membership of the new council and adds and replaces it with your changes. Um, so the changes that you requested are in yellow. So first, with regard to the executive committee, we have the commissioner of health serving as chair, not as a co-chair. Second, in subdivision B, we have a community leader in the field of substance misuse prevention, jointly appointed by the speaker of the house and president pro tem. And that person is no longer a chair. Next, with regard to the members um, of the council more generally, we have language that members of the council shall collectively offer teas and and start over. <laughs> members of the council shall collectively offer expertise and experience in the categories listed below, with the understanding that a single member may offer expertise and experience in multiple categories. To capture that idea that one person could serve. Okay, <clears throat> okay. let's go through it all, and then we'll make suggestions. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, and then there is that just one last change on page three, line four, and that was replacing substance use disorder, substance misuse prevention with younger, with the youth Vermont population. Um, and now then it reads community based on profit youth services. But we still have substance use disorder or substance misuse prevention when the, in the older population. Yes. Yeah. And what, what did that replace? It um, replaced the one about youth, um, mm -hmm. you know, substance. It, I think it tracked this pretty closely. Substance use disorder, substance misuse prevention within the youth population. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's what the other one said. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So let's go through each one of these. And I did have a conversation um, with uh, the administration about the, some of this, and I think that there. I, I think that if we go back to the governor appointment, but leave the community leader <clears throat> as to, as a member, that would be probably better received instead of having the pro tem and the speaker. Well, okay. <laughs> I do, yeah, I do think one of the most important things is that we don't we have co-chairs, because I just don't the, think that Not having the co-chairs, well. I think, was the important piece. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And, what, the, and the other thing is we can, 
we'll, we're going to look at this thing unfold and, and sort out um, what, what happens. So as a proposal of amendment, Katie, I hate to do this, but um, can we appoint it by the governor? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hated to do this. No, it's nice to have your mind made up, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that's why, you know, people born in September are like this. <laughs> um, never make a decision. So, um, the, the other question I would have is, okay, right now we have a chair but no vice chair. Do we want to suggest that the community leader be the vice chair? No big. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can hear a lot. Of, uh, I don't either. Whatever do you'd like. I don't. You have three votes. Yeah. <laughs> How does Sheila Livingston feel about that? Sheila Livingston from the apartment. That's fine. The resident. Okay, the let's put vice chair yeah. and then we still have some leadership identified. Now she gets four um, votes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she made. She promoted Sheila the senator yesterday. I know. She said. <laughs> Deputy Commissioner. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, that, that'd be good. All right. Then, on uh, number two, um, ensuring that the categories might be represented by one member, you know, multiple categories by one member. Mm -hmm. That was good. Do, do, is, do we want to say that anything about ensuring the wieldiness? The size of the yeah, council of the council the total size of the council and, well is manageable something I do do we want to say that or should we just not yeah. say anything not yeah. get micromanaged yeah I feel like it's a little micromanaged it seems okay. like the oh, we'll just avoid that then yeah All right. oh thank you. that that's good to you just where you have it's great and then the last one the last one was that's Senator McCormick Senator McCormick Is there a problem with that? I think, actually that's what Representative um, Kelly. Kelly, <laughs> uh -huh. Bahala, that's right. Bahala, um, Bahala. yeah. yeah. Uh, suggested anyway. So. Okay, so let's do that. So this will be our proposal of amendment, a further proposal of amendment back, back to the House. Okay. When we get it. Um, and it it is on the calendars, uh, so we could do it this morning or this afternoon, depending on your schedule. Okay. Probably this afternoon, it feels like. Um, I could probably get it to you by um, 10. Okay. I get it to you by pink mail at 10. Okay. okay. Not, I, and, and just so you know, I may, I may want to run it by the house. Okay. Just to make sure that we're not running into a brick wall. But, okay. Well, okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now on to S7. Okay. Okay, we need, she's going to get the, Linda's going to get the one passed by house. Oh. So it, um, what are we doing now? S7? it's up for S7. a vote today. Um, in the house. house. So there isn't a version as past house. It's just two oh, committee reports. It's just a committee report. It's a, the house health care committee report and the house human services committee report. <laughs> And we have this fiscal note from no one on 146. This is I'm going to make I think it would be great to have S146 finished. Yes. Is there a oh, really? I need a critical. Wow. Can you 
give us an overview of what S7 is? Remind us where we are. Sure. Um, so this is, is an, act, an act relating to social service integration within Vermont's healthcare system. If you remember, it started off as just a single section bill that was asking for a report about from about the integration of social services with the ACO. Mm -hmm. And so that section is still in there, section two. But section one, you added um, asked that a report that's required um, of the agency by CMS uh, also come to this committee and um, to the committees upstairs. Then, as I said, section two is that report about um, service integration. Section three um, <coughs> added, nope, there is a section 2A, um, which um, dealt with the budget review of the accountable care organization and added a new set, a new criteria. Um, and then section three, which was the director of trauma prevention and resilience development, the responsibilities of that individual, and you added a duty for that individual. Section four was the report on the Dulce model and the home visiting programs, and that was it. So. Okay, and so as, so we'll look at the changes. So human services made changes to section four. Yeah, so there are two committee reports. You know, I almost wonder if it's easy. I have, I pulled up the calendar, the house calendar for today. Ah. And both committee reports are one right after the other. Okay. So if you were to pull up the calendar for today and go to page 27, 26. Let's do that. Then. Because we don't have the bill yet, but um, yeah. obviously time is of the essence. 27. 27. Yeah. 27, 26? Yeah. It should be an easier way to get to it. <laughs> a word search. Okay. So is this on, I didn't check, is this on notice today or is it? No, this is up for, um, Second reading. Okay. Okay. So we're not that. Huh. Okay. Okay. Do you have it, Rich? You'll find it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay, so the first report is the report of the health care committee. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the main changes here have to do with date changes. Mm -hmm. So in section one, subdivision A1, the report is due on or before January 1, 2021. And the previous date um, had not aligned with when CMS was requiring the report. So now okay. um, this is more in alignment for the agency with when the report is um, do. And then there's a new subdivision A2 that says in preparing the report, the agency shall consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. So that is the number two is a new addition? Yep, A2 is a new addition. Okay. Similarly, in section two, there is a date change for when this report is due. It's now due December 1st, 2019. Um, and I'm at a loss for what the original date was. Um, but again, in this section, um, let's see, in the, the big first paragraph after the cross-reference to 18 BSA 9382, there's a new sentence. In preparing the report, the board shall consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. So it's that same sentence being added in both places. Okay. And then the next section is 2A, Oversight of Accountable Care Organizations, and this is the budget review process. And I don't believe any changes were made to this particular section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Section three, the Health Care Committee did not make any changes um, to the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience. Mm -hmm. So that is the same. Similarly, section four, the Health Care Committee did not make any changes um, to the report back on um, Dulce and home visiting. Mm -hmm. So that's the health care report. Mm -hmm. And then next is the human services report. And as you'll see, there are two instances of amendment um, amending the health care committee's report. 
So the first change is in section one, striking the whole first paragraph and inserting a new paragraph. But the only change is the last clause at the very end of that paragraph is an addition after finan all payer financial target services comma, including future plans for the integration of long-term care services with the accountable care organization. Okay, and as it reads currently with the health care, or with ours, I would suppose, that how do we what do we say about that anything they okay we'll have to look at this uh, uh -oh. it's on our website now mm -hmm. i'm going to go you to just, that because it's easier for me to i have to go back and go back <laughs> i lost where i was Okay, so we can look at the human services separate from the house. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> I haven't voted on yet. So the human services report amends the health care committee's report. Yeah, okay. So, but essentially the human services committee, oh, the health care committee didn't do a whole lot to the bill as compared with what? Human services. So healthcare made the date changes and they added that language yeah. about um, people. Yeah, yeah. stakeholders. Uh -huh. Human services, um, again, they struck the whole first paragraph, but they replaced the paragraph with nearly identical language, except the last clause in that first paragraph is new. The clause including future plans for the integration of long term care services with the accountable care organization. But then they strike out section four in its entirety. And yes, so that's the second instance of amendment. That that is gone. So that's the language, the dull <laughs> and the home visiting. Why did they do that? Do you know do do you have any sense? I, I mean we'll have to once we have the bill, we'll have someone come in and talk with us about their rationale for that. Yeah, I think that probably be the, the best thing to do. I know um, the liaison um, to healthcare spoke in the healthcare committee about it yesterday afternoon and referenced the fact that the um, director of trauma prevention is already um, looking at some of these issues and has, you know, general direction to be looking at this. So. <laughs> Would like any more specific information than that, I suggest you have somebody from that committee come in and chat with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, when we get this from the house, from you, on our website page, can we have the bill with the changes? Highlighted sure. in the bill as a whole. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Yeah, I could just highlight the, the new language yeah. for you so you could see that. Yeah, that would be, yeah. Good. That would be good because then we can determine what might or might not be missing based mm -hmm. on our original intent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's let's just say that. Let's go through this one more time. Sure. Because you got. So, Seven minutes. <laughs> May as well use you while we got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to go back to the health care report? Is that what you were thinking? Uh, I think let's go, let's start with the health care report. Okay. Oh, let me find it. I've got two human services. Okay, time out. Uh, wait, hang on. I don't know why I didn't. We had our reports way earlier, didn't we? We have house health care report. All right. But why does it say human services? What do you mean? I don't, I don't have it. Two different reports, one from human services and one from health care. Yeah, but it didn't come up. When I put, when I say health care, I'm getting human services. And, oh, dear. Put human services and see what you, you got that too. Yeah, I got both of them. Mm -hmm. both so I have oh, I have two of the same. Thing. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe it's not. Hold on. 
No, yeah. No, they're, no, both, they're, the are, they're both the same. They're both the same. Yeah, they're both the same. So you need to have I have passed by Senate. Yep. Passed by Senate. Yeah, and I have human services, but with the human services amendment and then House health care report. So. so between now and when we go through this thing again, we should probably read what we did and then read what they did. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like our reports were way earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, for one thing. 2021 is when is after the next election. Yes, it is. People will forget. Yes. Why did they put the reports later? Who knows? I know. We'll have to get the reporter of the bill in. The, the first one, there was testimony that um, that's the report that's required by CMS, and I believe it's not required until um, December 2020. And so they were trying to align the dates more closely. Right. So, yeah. I understand. Yeah, that's understandable. And the second one, I, I don't recall specifically why that date was changed. Okay. She's got it. She's doing it. Oh. You have an expert in the way that's why the date was changed. Oh, okay. For the record. Well, it's Miles, the Green Mountain Care Board, for the record. The date was changed from September 1st to December 1st to align with the quarterly reporting that we received from One Care and to give more time for claims to run out and to give a fuller picture of, okay. of the integration. That's, that's understandable as well. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good or not? Yes. Almost. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. I know. There must be a better way. <laughs> but the internet hasn't been My normal. My thing is slow It hasn't today. been normal yeah, well. since the little outage thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, should we have a decision to say uh, how Health Committee Report, or? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see that. House Health Care Report. Are there two others? That's what we yeah. want. Okay. I mean, yeah, do the House Health Care Report. I'm just going to refresh. Oh, well, no, that one still seems to be Okay, I keep it in this Nope. Yeah. Oh, it's it's actually under Human Services Report. Okay. That's the health care report. It's the last one in the line up there. Got it. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I apologize. No worries. How no much time we got? Let's okay. Just, yeah, I mean, let's just go through. We're not doing any voting or anything. Okay. So the health care report. Um, section 1 is the report that is due, um, and it's due to CMS. It's from the Agency of Human Services in collaboration with the board. It's going to the Appropriations Committee's Healthcare Human Services in this committee. And it's a plan to coordinate the financing and delivery of Medicaid mental health services and Medicaid home and community-based services and the all-payer financial target services. That's all the same except for the date change. And then the new language is subdivision A2. In preparing the report, the agency is to consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. Okay. Um, subsection B is the interim status presentation, which is January of this coming year. And it's to include an update on the agency's progress, the process for the plan's development, and the identities of any stakeholders with whom the agency has consulted. Oh, oh, bless you. Section two is the report on integration of services. So that report is coming December 1st of this year from the board, and it's coming to this committee, Human Services and Healthcare, and it evaluates the manner and degree to which social services, including services provided by the Parent-Child Center Network, DAs and SSAs, and Home Health and Hospice Agencies are integrated into ACOs, uh, certified ACOs. In preparing the report, the board is to consult with individuals receiving services and family members of individuals receiving services. It's that sentence that's new. That's the change. Yep. 
Um, and then the evaluation addresses the number of social service providers receiving payments through the ACOs uh, and for which services, the extent to which any existing relationship between social service providers and the ACO address childhood trauma and resilience building, and recommendations to enhance integration between social service providers and ACOs if appropriate. Um, next is section 2A. This is the budget review process and you've added a criteria, um, subdivision P, the extent to which the ACO provides resources to primary care practices to ensure that care coordination and community services such as mental health and substance use disorder counseling that are provided by community health teams are available to patients without imposing unreasonable burdens on primary care to providers or on ACO member organizations. That has not changed. Section three is the director of trauma prevention and resilience. This list is all of this individual's responsibilities and subdivision eight was added by this committee serving as a resource and ensuring new models used by community social service providers are aligned with the state's goals for trauma-informed prevention and resilience. That has not changed. Oh, can I ask you, is this, this has changed in the human services? No, that's that, not. That's okay. been retained. <laughs> Thank you. Section four um, is the report of the Director of Trauma Prevention and Resilience <laughs> Development and the Director of Maternal and Child Health. Um, reporting on the Dulce model and the home visiting programs. Healthcare did not make any changes to this and Human Services removed this section. Okay, we'll find out why they did that. Okay. Okay. So briefly, the Human Services report sure. does so it strikes that one section, uh -huh. and then in section one, in the first paragraph, it adds a new clause at the very end of the paragraph. So that part of this plan that AHS is working on for CMS um, would include future plans for the integration of long-term care services with the ACO. Okay, but I don't know how that's possible for others to plan for what the ACO is doing since they're an independent organization. Yep. Huh, okay, well we'll have to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Good. All Thank right. you. You're welcome. Now we have to wait for a quorum. I know. <laughs> and move on. Okay. So we've done two of the three bills that we're going to do. So we, we, if we, when we have Michael Grady, we can finish S55. Okay. Looking at that because they're 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 all up on the floor, but we we don't have a whole lot of time. So thank you. You're welcome, and I'll just add a minute to you. Excellent. I'll send it. Um, yeah. Email good. Sooner emails. the better, I think. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we're on break. There's someone that's good. Uh, just show us the places. Right, so on page one, line 19, the uh, Human Services Committee wanted the fact that the commissioner has to request the working group to review chemicals for additional listing. They, when they wanted that removed, they want the working group to review the proposed chemicals for additional listing. Okay. They want it to be a power and duty of the working group. With that said, on um, page two, line 16, they want the working group to meet more often if they're going to have additional duties and that they're going to be providing, serving in an advisory capacity to the commissioner. They want, they want uh, them to meet. They've only met once in the past two years because that's all they're required to do and that the house human services would require them to meet um, two times at least two times a year okay um, and then on page three in what is pro being provided as notice by the manufacturers regarding a chemical of high concern in children product this is the language that passed the senate the brand name, product model, and universal product code, if the product has such a code. Should I move mm -hmm. on? Yep. On page four, 
Um, this is changing the time frame for manufacturers to provide notice. Right now, they provide notice biennially. So every two years, and the human services wants them to report annually. And so beginning August 31st, 2020, because that's the next deadline date for reporting, the, um, the manufacturers will provide annual notice thereafter. Okay. And then in the rule, <laughs> rulemaking section, on page five, well, page four going on to page five, the standard for the commissioner to add a chemical to the list of chemicals of high concern. Current law says on the basis of the weight of credible scientific evidence, you had changed it to on the basis of credible peer-reviewed scientific information. And they like credible scientific evidence. They looked at the standard in other states, specifically Maine and Washington, and they think credible scientific evidence is more consistent with those two states. And there is a purpose section in the chemicals of high concern chapter that says the purpose is to maintain as much consistency with other states. And so they, they but they wanted to to reference or include some uh, um, reference to peer-reviewed studies. So on the basis of credible scientific evidence, including peer-reviewed studies. Let me, can we stop there for a minute? Mm -hmm. So understanding that peer review is the way that science is validated, scientific data and research is validated. Um, does this open the door to a study from uh, a manufacturer that has not ever been peer reviewed, except maybe within the manufacturing company itself, to being thrust into the, so the working group or, or um, placed into the conversation that may be a bias? Study. I'm, I, well, I, I, I think the existing standard, weight of credible scientific evidence, yes. allows for that right now. So, get rid of that. Your, your proposal that passed the Senate of having it have a peer review condition was the first uh, insertion of that concept in, into the standard. It's so, not right now, in the other states? Um, so actually, that's a that's a good point. In, in Maine, they def, they define credible scientific evidence uh, as being in part, but one of it is including being peer reviewed. So it is included as as a concept in Maine. Washington doesn't um, Washington doesn't have that. Hmm. Uh, included though allows for. Evidence that is not peer reviewed. If I read the same the grammar correctly, yeah. that's including but yeah. not limited to. Uh, that yeah yeah, it's a concern. That's, that's a concern. Yeah, it's a concern. Okay, the, just want to talk about that a little bit. And when we we're going to have to obviously go through this. Is is it on the floor for second reading today? It's on the floor. So it was supposed to be on the floor for second reading yesterday and third reading today. Because of the length of the debate on a couple of bills yesterday, they went home at 8.45 with the condition that everything's going to move through the calendar through all remaining stages of passage today. Okay, so we'll get S55 tomorrow. We'll have that. Hopefully, yes. Okay. And it's, it, is, it is up first or second. Okay. And I do probably need to be there in a few minutes. Okay, we're, we're not going to keep you. We're, we're, I know we're just about at the end here. Okay, good. So, and then on page six, the current rule, the standard in order to, for the commissioner to adopt a rule to regulate the sale or labeling of a product requires a recommendation from the working group. And that is being struck and changed to consultation. That was in your bill. Yeah. Um, what was also in your bill is page six, line seven. The standard when the 
for that rule is the commissioner needs to, or there needs to be a determination that children currently will be exposed and that that certainty of will was always a concern and you wanted that change yeah. in May. You have also struck on page six lines nine through 13 and eliminating the requirement that, that there be a determination that there is a probability that due to the degree of exposure that the exposure could cause or contribute to one or more of the adverse health effects. The Health Human Services Committee agree that probability is too high of a standard, um, but they do like this concept that yes, there may be exposure, but will exposure lead to one of the adverse health effects? So they, they wanted that concept built in, and so they replaced probability with possibility. Yeah. So my only concern here is uh, sort of the quantitative assessment, the degree and frequency. Um, if they had taken out those two phrases and just the possibility of exposure might fit better, but we could make we'll, we'll talk about that. This is, this is fresh, this is language that just stepping back and looking at it in an idealistic policy way, the language makes perfect sense. And then you realize how it can be used. Yes. And yes. This, is, this, is a, this is meat for years of yes. delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving on on page six, line 14, because you changed will to may on line seven, you want to change will to may on line 14. Mm -hmm. And then in one of the criteria for determining if there's exposure on page seven, line one, the, they wanted to change potential and frequency to potential and likelihood of exposure. Um, and then on page seven, line 16, because the working group, this is language that was in your bill, uh, the working group isn't, isn't recommending or doesn't have that conditional authority of the commissioner. Mm -hmm. So if they provide a consultation to the commissioner and the commissioner doesn't follow it, what, what is their authority? This gives them the ability to submit to you their recommendations. Um, so it's kind of provide a check on a commissioner that just ignores their, their recommendations. Then on page eight, line three, this was striking the obsolete date. The commissioner has adopted these procedure and process rules. Um, the date is no longer relevant. And then page eight, line 13 to 17, this was language in your bill about what, when should a manufacturer who's introducing a product between a reporting deadline have to provide notice that the product has a chemical high concern to children in it. And so is it prior to sale or is it at the next reporting period deadline? So you had directed the Department of Health um, to address that and requirements for when and how a manufacturer of a children's product that contains a chemical of high concern provides the notice when the manufacturer intends to introduce the product for sale between the required dates for reporting. Yeah. And and so that that the house left that as is the but and they left the directive for when that rulemaking needs to be done, January 1, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is a, a requirement on uh, a report regarding implementation of the program. That, that was in yours as well. Uh, the only other change that they made was in the effective dates. They wanted that the, the rulemaking um, to take effect on passage to give them an, an extra month in order to go to rulemaking. Okay. So, some improvements and some, and a couple of questions that we have. We will have to, the, the peer review we're going to have to think about a lot, but we'll look at that and see what comes over finally tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. We originally did not want the peer review. We just wanted if there were indications of possible. Well, I problems that, that, that the, the, the commissioner well, would, would act on that, at least to identify as a, a chemical of concern. 
We didn't want the highest standard. Of well, peer-reviewed analysis is really important. Um, credible scientific information, then if, if Washington State truly has that without peer review, that's something we could consider. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just, just think about it because... Well, again, you know, to think of what the words actually mean is one thing. Think of how it could be used. Because it seems to me you could say that there is no credible scientific information without peer review. Exactly. By yeah. definition, that, it's peer review. Yeah. But yeah. then you get into the... the, the if I were the lawyer, for, if I were the sleazebag lawyer for the, for the chemical guys, I would say the legislature could have said period, period, period and they yeah. didn't. Right. So obviously this means something different. Well, yeah. Maine has a definition of credible scientific information as including peer review. That is another revenue that we might yeah. take. Yeah. So let's think about that. I, um, I, I don't want to, I know that the House has worked very hard on this bill. They want to make it a bill that will get signed and passed into law. But I don't want to pass into law something that has uh, a hole 10 foot, feet wide. Uh, yeah, I know. So we need to think about how to do it. A part of me is just thinking, you know, no matter what we do, the bad guys are going to hang us up um, and they're going to delay. No matter what. I know. So well, let's just pass the damn bill and no. see them in court. <laughs> we want to do it right. We want to do it right. We do. We want to win. Yeah, but we don't, want, we don't want good to be the sacrifice for the, yeah. you know, for the sake of perfection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's sort of what I'm saying. Is it, yeah, I know you're willing to live with the. That one I can't. As a scientist, I have a really difficult time. But I think, you know what, I think we're going to court no matter what we do. Oh, probably. Yeah. And, uh, You're right about that. So we, I think our goal well, is not to give them any more wiggle room than we possibly Here's my can. concern about credible scientific information. And I think I've said that this before in here. The EPA just came out saying that glyphosate does not cause cancer. Mm -hmm. All the peer-reviewed literature indicates it yeah, does, does cause cancer. Yeah. If you look at the work that comes out of industry, you might get a different, yeah, right. draw a different conclusion. So that's the kind of that's the kind of debate that we really would like to avoid. Yeah, in in our state. You know that that glyph I've been saying glyphosate for years. I've yeah. been mispronouncing oh. it. You can say it any way you want. <laughs> well, I've been saying Abenaki for years too. I, now I'm hearing a Benaki. I've never heard that yeah, one before. Yeah. No. no, but but you know I have always resisted the idea of seeing um, opponents of environmental protections and mm -hmm. health protection mm -hmm. as, as inherently evil. I'm, you know, I, I tell my students, you know, a person can be wrong without being evil or stupid or crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and getting along with the people you disagree with is an important thing. i got to tell you that thing on glyphosate, that is evil. It, it is. Evil. It is evil. That the, you know, to take something that is clearly causes cancer. Yeah. It's totally. And you just say, well, no, it's okay because yeah, it's industry. You know, it's a lot of profits being lost if we tell you. There's a lot of cancer being caused. Oh yeah. Well, it's like yeah, the other companies for yeah. decades, right? If we tell the truth, it's going to cost us money. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. it destroys our healthcare system, and this is what's wrong. And right now. Uh, the company that produces the most chemicals in the world is looking to expand to Latin America, South America, <laughs> continent of Africa, India, and to build a, an increase of between 15 and 25 percent of their production efforts without having standards in place. And that, that's one of, the, one of the things that's going on right now with free trade agreement negotiations across the globe. Uh, so it's sad. We're, gonna, we're destroying our water and our land. We're placing stuff into the food chain that is not biodegradable but is bioaccumulative and will cause some debilitating diseases. Well, you know, oh. I'm hearing from people I You're pressing me. <laughs> oh, no. I hear from people I respect and trust that the 5G stuff is just a lot of alarmism and it's yeah. really all fine. But I once 
was denigrated as a new kook. Right. And the kooks were, we were right. <laughs> we were right. And I was denigrated as a climate alarmist. We were right. <laughs> we are right. You know, and so I'm just reluctant to totally blow these people off. I mean, I get, I get people I like and respect and trust to say, no, they're, both, they're just, just, they're all, it's really crap on stuff. It's aluminum foil ass stuff. And there is no problem there, Dick. Just, just pass the damn bill. And which is probably what I'm going to do. But in the back of my mind is, you know, have I gone over to the dark side of the earth? We'll find out. Yeah. Okay, we're done. We're finished.